This is Duke University. Global trade and environmental Being justice. Human rights issues today. are still. The term Ubuntu. Oh, the Alien and Sedition Act. He's making inferential discoveries. The importance of an archive. The John Ho Franklin Center. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Annie McDonough, and as Professor Jensen mentioned, I was in Haiti last summer with Duke Engage, and I was doing both qualitative interviews on PTSD um, and assessing trauma intensities in Laogon, and also um, administering the Sprint E PTSD assessment form. So uh, this presentation is going to look a little bit different because I'm just embarking on my thesis right now. But I wanted to provide all of you with some of the background research I've been doing and then end with research questions that I'll be exploring in the next year. So for my thesis, I will be exploring maternal, postpartum, and post-traumatic stress in Haiti. And I'll be doing that through um, the lens of looking at post-traumatic stress research, uh, partly with my qualitative interviews. I'll be analyzing those that I conducted last summer. Uh, looking at postpartum stress and postpartum PTSD studies, also looking at maternal health statistics in Haiti and <clears throat> maternal health beliefs in Haiti in order to frame it in a Haitian context. So just an overview, postpartum post-traumatic stress is a pretty recently documented phenomenon. Um, it doesn't have its own DSM diagnosis, but it is under the umbrella of the DSM-4 PTSD criteria, which include a stressor, and in this case, the stressor would be a traumatic birth experience, such as an emergency C-section um, or a premature delivery, and also includes criterion of intrusive recollection or re-experiencing the trauma, avoidance or numbing, and hyperarousal. And um, it's important to note that this postpartum post-traumatic stress is different from postpartum depression and also different from postpartum psychosis. So I'll be examining postpartum stress in a Haitian context. So maternal health statistics in Haiti, uh, there's a very high maternal mortality rate. And last summer while I was in Laogon, the other Duke Engage group uh, was also working on a maternal mortality survey. So this is what sparked my interest in the intersection of mental health and maternal health. So there's a very high maternal mortality rate. It's the highest in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, there are many barriers to prenatal care and emergency obstetric services, especially in rural areas. And there's a high percentage of pregnancy complications. In one study I looked at, almost 60% of pregnant women self-reported uh, that they had pregnancy complications. Um, so all of these would seem to increase the risk for prevalence of postpartum PTSD in Haiti. Uh, and then I'm also examining maternal health beliefs in Haiti to frame the study in a Haitian context. So this is a picture I actually took in Laogon last summer uh, of a voodoo temple that I visited. So I'll be looking at voodoo cultural beliefs um, and in the fall, uh, voodoo ugan and Haitian musician named Errol Josué visited, and he spoke about mental health and maternal health in Haiti, and he spoke about um, the link between maternal mental health problems and the failure to follow voodoo practices. And one that he mentioned specifically was that uh, after the birth, uh, the mother must bathe three to four times before she sees sunlight. And he mentioned that uh, current maternal mental health problems can arise from the failure to follow these voodoo practices. And then Paul Farmer, who is a Duke alum, <laughs> uh, has written about a pregnancy disorder called mauvais sang, which is somatically experienced and caused by emotional distress. And it is believed to be a blood disorder that impacts the pregnancy and also impacts the mother's breast milk and leads to lait gâté, which is spoiled milk syndrome, which often leads to a discontinuation of breastfeeding in Haiti. So based on all of these uh, background research, these three spheres, I'm looking at the following research questions. So is stre postpartum stress and postpartum PTSD prevalent in Haiti? How does it relate to post-traumatic stress after the earthquake? Uh, what effects does postpartum stress have on children? 
and how might we use the above information to develop treatments that are context appropriate? So hopefully um, after the following year, I'll have some compelling conclusions to share with you all. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.